the last video, we, work, we laid out the general theory of trig substitutions when you use each one. Now let's do some examples. Our first example is an integral where we want to do the tangent substitution. So let's look at this integral. Now, you see you got x squared plus something. And whenever you see a squared plus x squared or x squared plus a squared, you should immediately think x equals a tangent of theta. It's x squared plus 2 squared, so you want x to be 2 tangent of theta. And dx is going to be 2 secant of theta d theta. The next thing you want to do is you want to write out the triangle. You say the tangent of theta is x over 2. So we'll put an x over here and a 2 over here. And the tangent of theta is x over 2. And x is twice the tangent of theta. And you apply the Pythagorean theorem and you say the hypotenuse is the square root of x squared plus 4. Great. We got our triangle. We got our substitution. And we've recognized that whenever you get the square root of x squared plus 4, you can write that in terms of theta because the secant of theta is x squared plus 4 over 2. So this must be 2 secant of theta. So x squared plus 4 is 4 secant squared of theta. Great. So now we can rewrite our integrand in terms of theta. dx over x squared plus 4 to the 3 halves. Well, dx is 2 secant squared theta d theta over 4 secant squared theta to the 3 halves. So that gives you an 8 secant cubed theta. 2, two over 8 is a quarter. Secant squared over secant cubed is 1 over secant. And there we go. 1 quarter d theta over secant theta. And of course, 1 over secant theta is just another name for cosine of theta. And the integral of cosine theta is sine of theta. And there's our integral. Now comes the hard part. The hard part is rewriting everything back in terms of x. So we need to figure out what the sine of theta is. But as Sokotoa tells us that, once we have our triangle, we know what the sine of theta is. It's opposite over hypotenuse. So that's x over 4 times the square root of x squared plus 4. That's 1 over 4 sine theta plus a constant, and we're done. All trig functions of theta can be read off from the triangle using Sokotoa. So once you have your triangle, converting back from theta to x should not be hard. Okay, that's a tangent substitution. Now let's do a sine substitution. So we're going to compute the integral of the square root of 9 minus x squared. And you say, hey, whenever you have a squared minus x squared, you think a, x equals a sine theta. And 9, of course, is 3 squared, so you should think x equals 3 sine theta. dx is 3 cosine theta d theta, and we draw our triangle. Since the sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, and the sine is x over 3, the hypotenuse is 3, and that side is x, and so the nearest side is square root of 9 minus x squared. Well, that means that root 9 minus x squared is 3 cosine of theta. If you want to use, if you want, you can say a squared minus x squared is a squared minus a squared sine squared, which is a squared cosine squared. That's one way to see it. Or you can just look at it from the triangle. So then we rewrite our integrand in terms of theta. Root 9 minus x squared is 3 cosine theta. dx is 3 cosine theta d theta. So we have the integral of 9 cosine squared theta d theta. Now, this is a slightly more involved integral than the last one, but we know how to do it. We use the double angle formula, and then we integrate cosine of 2 theta to get sine of 2 theta over 2. And all that's left is figuring, at, oh, and then we use double angle to convert it back to sine theta cosine theta. But then what is that in terms of x? Well, we look at our triangle. We say sine theta is x over 3. Cosine theta is root 9 minus x squared divided by 3. So this is 9 halves. Theta itself is the arc sine of x over 3. Then sine of theta is x over 3. Cosine theta is root 9 minus x squared over 3 
plus a constant. Or you can simplify it a little bit. And you can write this as 9 halves sine of x over 3 plus x square root of 9 minus x squared over 2 plus a constant. Okay, our last example is an integral where you want to use the secant substitution. So in this case, we're going to integrate dx over the square root of 4x squared minus 1. And you can factor out a 4 there, and you can say that's 2 square root of x squared minus a quarter. And whenever you see x squared minus a squared, you should say, hey, I want x equals a secant theta. So in this case, you want x equals 1 half secant theta. And dx is 1 half secant theta tangent theta. Or if you prefer, you can say 2x equals secant theta. It means the same thing. So if 2x equals secant theta, the easiest way to write that is you put 2x and 1, because secant is the hypotenuse over the adjacent. And that makes the far side square root of 4x squared minus 1. So now we've got our triangle. And the square root of 4x squared minus 1 is the tangent. Great. Now we rewrite our integrand in terms of theta. dx is 1 half secant theta tangent theta d theta. The denominator is tangent theta. The tangents cancel. And we're left with 1 half the integral of secant theta d theta. Well, we know what that is. That's the log of secant plus tangent. And all that's left is rewriting that in terms of x. But secant theta is 2x. And tangent theta is square root of 4x squared minus 1. So this gives us 1 half the natural log of 2x plus square root of 4x squared minus 1 plus a constant. And now we see how powerful these methods are. You start off with this funny looking square root. And you'd never in a million years think, I'm going to get the log of 2x plus square root of 4x squared minus 1. But you do, and it's via the trig functions that let you do this kind of integral.